Hello everyone. In the session of CCNP Encore series, I will discuss wireless LAN deployment models. In wireless networking, access point plays a crucial role in extending connectivity to wireless clients. Wireless network rely on access points to connect wireless devices to wired network. For example, this client uh, in a small enterprise network, if he has to connect to a file or application server it has to go via wireless network then to wired network where the wired i mean the server is connected to a wired switch there are actually two main types of ap architectures one is autonomous standalone aps or another one is lightweight controller based aps you can choose the type based on your network size management complexity and scalability requirement let's go ahead and have a quick overview of autonomous access points autonomous access points are self-contained standalone devices that operate independently uh, to give an example I would say they are like a Swiss army knives of wireless networking like they can handle everything on their own from managing wireless connections to uh, enforcing security policies and all so in an autonomous deployment each AP is configured individually like uh, <coughs> such as like configuring SSID, RF settings and VLAN assignments. For example, if you have four APs in your network, you will need to, as a network engineer, you need to configure each and every access point individually and separately. And however, as the network grows, managing this access point individually could become time consuming, headache and inefficient. <laughs> this model is uh, great for small networks like a small office or a home office where you have very two or three number of APs or one AP. So this is the limitation. But one of the feature of using autonomous AP is it uh, allows data to take a short and simple path like uh, if you have two users associated with same autonomous ap user can reach each other by just passing through the ap it doesn't have to go through the wired network or uh, upper network so let's move on to the next access point type that is lightweight ap or you can call it as a controller based ap unlike autonomous ap Lightweight APs don't operate individually or independently. Instead, they rely on WLC or a wireless LAN controller to manage their operations. This is known as a split MAC architecture where AP handles the real-time 802.1.11 processes and uh, WLC takes care of the management functions of the AP. So in this model, the AP and WLC communicate through CAP web tunnels. Like every <coughs> access point will have a CAP web tunnel with WLC. And these tunnels can carry both control and data traffic. This setup allows for uh, uh, centralized management, making it much easier for a network engineer to configure and maintain large number of access points. For example, uh, if you have like 100 of APs, you can manage them all from a single WLC interface. Like if you see here, if I, uh, let me, let me show you. Okay. Like uh, from here, you can manage this WLC, this WLC, and then this WLC as well. All these three WLC you can manage from, I mean, sorry, access point, you can manage it from a single WLC. So one of the advantage of lightweight access point is uh, its flexibility. Like they can, um, I mean, uh, they can operate in different modes depending on the network needs. For example, uh, like uh, let me show you different modes. Just a quick overview of those modes, uh, like local mode. 
the default mode this is the default mode where the ap provides wireless services to the wireless clients then we have flex connect mode which allows the ap to switch traffic locally like for example if the connection of the wlc is lost uh, when your access point is in flex mode the traffic will switch over locally then there is a monitor mode uh, which turns the ap into dedicated sensor for detecting rogue devices or any interference for example if you see here this is the rogue device if anybody connects or if any uh, hacker connects the rogue access point when you are in a when your access point in a, is in a monitor mode it will detect it <laughs> then uh, it can also operate in uh, sniffer mode this in this mode it captures wireless traffic for analysis like if you want to analyze some traffic then uh, you can uh, configure it in a sniffer mode then another mode is bridge mode this mode enables the ap to act as a bridge between two networks like if you want to connect two access point and uh, have a connectivity between them you can configure both in a bridge mode then there is a flex plus bridge mode like uh, this is the hybrid of flex connect and bridge mode for mesh networks and then the last one is uh, se connect in this mode it collects and analyzes the spectrum analysis data to discover the source of the interference if there is any source of interference in this mode it will collect and analyze the data and tell you so in an enterprise there are several <coughs> these are the modes in an enterprise there are several common deployment models for integrating this wlc the wlc which i have showed you like uh, how you want to integrate your wlc it depends on different models so let's see different types of models starting with centralized wireless lan deployment in this model wlc is typically placed in a data center or uh, near a network core if you see here uh, like uh, okay if you see here wlc is placed near the core network or it can be placed uh, in a data center if you remember the three tier model or two tier model the data center is connected to the core network so the main goal of uh, the main goal is to provide a single point of control for multiple aps across the network aps in this uh, deployment model operate in <coughs> sorry lightweight mode meaning they rely on the wlc for decision making a cap web tunnel is established between each ap and the wlc and traffic from ap is tunneled using cap web tunnel i mean uh, the cap web if you don't know what it is it is called control and provisioning of wireless access point this is the name of that uh, protocol to the wlc some of the benefit of using this type of design is scalability a single wlc cisco wlc can support up to like uh, 6000 aps and 64000 wireless access clients if you if a network grows beyond this you can add more wlcs to the design uh, each located centrally then it's uh, another benefit is like uh, simplified managers management like one controller can manage all aps and then centralized security enforcement this is another advantage or benefit because centralized wlc provides a convenient place to enforce security policy that affect all wireless users and then the last one is seamless roaming user can move between aps while maintaining a stable connection for example a user walking across uh, an office building stay connected without reauthentication let's look at the uh, data path uh, of uh, this type of wls i mean wireless lan deployment unlike autonomous aps where traffic can flow directly between a user i mean between between uh, autonomous aps users in centralized deployment require traffic to pass through wlc for example if i uh, take these two laptops if they want to communicate they have to pass through wlc and then 
come back like this. So this is the path uh, it will take in this type of deployment model. And this, the, because of this, there is a limitation. Like uh, since all the traffic has to go through the WLC, longer data path can introduce latency, especially for uh, local traffic. Like as I sh shown you, the traffic is taking this path. And the uh, round trip time between the AP and the WLC should be less than 100 milliseconds. With that, let's move on to another type of deployment model, cloud-based deployment. As you know, with the rise of cloud computing, enterprises are moving towards cloud-based wireless controller deployments. Like instead of uh, physical controller, organization can now leverage controllers hosted in public or private cloud. In public cloud deployment, uh, wireless controller is hosted in public cloud environment. On the left, if you see the public cloud controller, which is remotely located and connected to the APs over the internet. If you see here, if this controller is located in uh, over the public cloud, over the in, in, I mean on the internet. Uh, this means the controller could be hundreds or even thousands of miles away from the APs. The APs establish a cap web tunnel, control tunnel to the controller. As you can see, uh, here the APs have established the cap web tunnel to the controller. The tunnel is used for, as I said earlier, for management and control traffic. However, all wireless data traffic is switched locally at the AP level. Like all, only the control and management traffic is uh, forwarded to the wireless controller but the local data traffic will go locally because APs in uh, public cloud deployment must operate in flex connect mode. As I said earlier, flex connect allows the AP to handle the data traffic locally while still being managed by the remote controller. This setup is great for organization with uh, multiple branch offices, like you have multiple enterprises with multiple branch offices or uh, remote locations, because it as it reduces latency and bandwidth usage for data traffic. In private cloud deployment, uh, the controller is still cloud based, but it is hosted within the enterprise own private cloud, usually in the data center. On the right side, if you see, uh, the private uh, cloud controller which is within the enterprise data center and connected to the AP over the local network. It is not placed in the internet but it is placed in the private cloud located in the data center of your uh, network, your enterprise network. Since the controller is close to the AP, the AP has more flexibility. Like they can operate in either uh, local mode and uh, like all traffic, like both control and data is sent to the controller. In flex connect mode, data is traffic, as I said, switched locally, just like in a public cloud deployment. Private cloud deployment are ideal for enterprises that want the scalability of cloud-based management, but prefer to keep their infrastructure on-premises for security and compliance reasons. Cloud-based controller can typically support uh, up to 6,000 APs and up to 64,000 wireless clients. With this, let's move on to the next cloud I mean, uh, deployment model, w uh, wireless LAN deployment model, that is distributed wireless deployment. Imagine you are having a network that spans uh, across multiple remote sites and distributed locations. Maybe it's a retail chain with stores across the country or a university with campuses in different cities. In such cases, having one large wireless LAN controller to manage everything might not be the best solution because the distance between the controller and the access point can lead to the latency issues. Like a single point of failure could bring the entire network down. 
So managing thousands of APs and clients from one location can be inefficient. Instead of relying on one large WLCs, uh, we can like uh, use distributed uh, controllers. Like if you have, for example, multiple branches and a HQ, so you can distribute, I mean, the WLC functionality to different branches. Like in this setup, uh, like distributed wireless deployment, smaller but appropriately sized WLCs are placed at each site. Like if you see here, uh, in this type of deployment, we have WLCs placed at each branches. These are little bit less powerful than uh, the one which we discussed earlier. So this creates a distributed wireless deployment. Like if you distribute it, and let me tell you how it works. Each like each WLC has its, I mean each site has its own WLC, which manages the AP and clients at that location. These controllers are typically small uh, standalone models designed to handle the specific needs of their site. For example, a distributed WLC might support up to 250 APs and uh, 5000 uh, wireless clients. And this approach ensures that each site is operating independently, reducing uh, like latency and improving reliability. Another type is uh, controller-less deployment. This centralized approach works well for many networks, but it can overkill for smaller environment. Like uh, in most wireless deployment, we rely on wireless LAN controllers or WLCs to manage APs. We could simplify things even further by adding embedded wireless controller or EWCs. So in this setup, there is no dedicated WLC. Instead, a regular AP is equipped with WLC software, right, uh, which allows it to act as a both an AP and the controller. For example, if you see here, uh, the access point and WLC are a single device. So one AP, as I said, is designated as the EWC and runs the WLC software. This AP forms a cap web, I mean, tunnel with itself. Okay, and uh, Yes, you heard it right, it, with itself and with other any other APs at the same location. The D EWC manages the other APs just like a uh, traditional WLC would do, but without the need for a separate device. So Cisco describes this as a uh, controller-less deployment because there is no discrete WLC, just an AP with embedded controller functionality. These type of deployment can be used typically by a small to medium sized network. If you have up to like uh, 100 APs to 2000 clients, uh, an EWLC can handle this job. So branch locations like for remote sites with handful of APs and EWC is often the most practical choice. That's it for this session. I hope this was informative for you. In my next session, I will discuss about location services in wireless LAN design. Thank you for watching. Please do like, comment, share and subscribe. And also please do not forget to check out my courses on Udemy. I'll be sharing the link in the description below. Thank you for watching.